Hey guys, it's Will Patterson here and welcome to a new Illustrator CC tutorials and today I'm doing a tutorial about layers because people wanted to know more about layers within Photoshop. Now this could be a long video and you're probably wondering why but there's so many things within this powerful function called layers that you need to know when doing Illustrator. A lot of the illustrators will say that they don't use layers but if you're a designer and a graphic designer making logos, Illustrator is such a powerful tool within layers, sorry, it's such a powerful tool that you can use to hierarchy base your workflow and to organize where everything goes to make quick and clean edits when changing your images. So as you can see here, I've got like this poster that I've created from a website at Prophesy Apparel, go check it out if you want, and I've got tons and tons of layers. But if you don't know where the layers are, go up to window and then go down to layers or press F7 just to get it quickly. You'll get this little box here. And if you're having trouble, then there shouldn't be anything in there if you've got a new document up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new document so you can see. There we go. Just create that. Then I've got my layers panel here and it should just look like that. So it should just say layer one with a black square, sorry, a white square on it. Okay. So I'm going to show you a few things about layers. This could be a long video, so prepare yourself. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is that the background layer has these two icons on it and every layer has its eye icon. If you're used to Photoshop, then you'll know some of the tools within uh, the layers of Illustrator. But if you are in Photoshop, don't be fooled thinking that it's just the same because it's not. It's quite a bit different and it feels different as well. It's actually more efficient for Illustrator. Okay, so the layers part of Illustrator is a lot like Adobe InDesign. So we have the uh, visibility toggle with the eye so anything that is not got the eye on it you can't see and what you can do is you can press and drag to see which layers you want to see or not so i've just clicked on everything there same with this one here is basically the toggles lock and you can lock things so you don't want to edit them so if i was to unlock the background i could press the background and move it however i want willy-nilly but if i was to lock it you can't actually select it so that makes it easier to select things within the background so you're not going to mess it all up. And I could do this the same as the eyes so I can drag all the way down to toggle and untoggle everything. Awesome. So what we have in these layers are basically loads of groups. So in the first layer of up here, which is black lines, which is just coincidentally first, that is why I'm going for it, we can see which layers these are on. So on this side bit there, if you wanted to see what was in them and you didn't know and you've got loads in your document, just press this little button there. Uh, and what that does is that selects it. Within that, I'm going to zoom in here, pressing Z and zooming in. Within that, we should have shapes that you've put into that layer or that are already in that layer. And basically within these is we have this sort of magenta uh, square around them. Uh, but within these, we have a red one. And then within, let's try and find something different. But within this one, we have like a greeny sort of thing in them, a greeny border around them. And what this means is that they're on different layers and the layers are color coordinated and you can edit them. So the first thing I want to show you is how to edit your layers. So black lines, here we are. I'm going to see which is in there. All these are in there because I've just selected them. I'm going to double click on the side of that and we can change the name. We can change the color. And we can even go to the color part here to change whatever color we want, literally to whatever shade you want, if you're on a Mac or whatever. And we could change it to whether it's a template and you can dim the images. That's useful for like if you're tracing over things like a, a piece of artwork with a blob brush tool or you want to dim the image so you can trace it back over it with a pen tool. It's useful for that. Also, another way to change the name is just to double click on the layer name not on the side of it because that brings the layer options up but on the name you can double click on it and change it <laughs> okay so the next one is we're gonna look into grouping so if in this we have like if we look into this and we just expand that you can see we've got loads and loads i'm gonna make this really big we've got loads and loads of layers here with this and these are all paths and these are all act as different layers let me show you so if i was to click on this path layer i can just select it like so on the layers panel and we click on this one you can select it but what if i wanted to create a sort of a group and then have other layers within this black lines layer well what i'll need to do is within this i'm just going to press the meatball function and what it's going to do is going to select 
each and every single one of these. And you can see which are selected with the green, sorry, the magenta squares on the outside. Indicate selected art, there you go. If you just hover over it. Then I'm gonna press Command G. Where's it gone? Well, it's gone to a new layer. It's gone to a sub layer called Group. And you can even edit the name of these as well. We have guides which are in layers as well, which is crazy. And you can actually, you can't actually select them, but you can view them, view them and stuff like that. Okay, so that's in a group. We can just call this Black Lines One. But what if I wanted to create a new subgroup? To do this, I'm going to go into a new document over here, and I'm going to create a background layer. So in this first layer, which I'm automatically set to, I'm going to create just a square around the border and then I'm going to change the color to a nice green and then I don't want any sort of stroke around it. Awesome. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is within this, I don't know why it's been a bit strange. We've got sort of a path going on there. Uh, within this, we've got this path within the layer. I'm going to edit this layer to call it BG. Then I want to edit the color by double clicking. I'm going to edit it to cyan and the problem is that illustrator's got a bug at the moment so if i wanted to to change this color as well you just have to click and close it and then open it again okay so we've got this path but what if i wanted something else in the background but i don't want to sort of move this but well, all we have to do is lock it but i don't mean lock the main layer i mean go into the layer and lock the actual green outline so i'm going to call it screen square because it's part of the background i want to make and then we've locked that. Then what I'm gonna do within this layer here, I'm gonna create another sub layer, which is basically like another group. I'm gonna call these circles. And then I'm gonna create a circle within that group, like so. I'm gonna change the color to something ridiculous that doesn't look good. And then I'm gonna simply make it smaller a bit. I'm gonna edit them like so, and then I'm gonna move them, and then bring them down, and then I'm gonna copy them all the way down, like so, and then highlight them all again, bring them in. Now that's great, because they're all in this one layer. Now if I went in here, you can see each and every circle is on a separate layer. So we can call it circle, if we wanted to, one, two, but I'm not gonna do that, because that's stupid. But what if I wanted to create a group? If I could do this automatically, that would be so much easier. So what I'm gonna do is in within this, you'll see in a second, so we've got loads of layers here, but what if I wanted to create something different within the circles? I'm gonna select all these circles by either passing my key in them, or by going to my circles bit here and just pressing on it. I'm gonna press Command G, and that'll create a group within this. And then in that group, you'll see all the circles. And that's how you create that. Now, I've done the background layers. So I'm going to come off that by pressing this little arrow key and press the overall lock so you can't actually go on to it. I want to create a new layer to have something over the top of it. So I'm going to have another square on the top of it like so. And then I'm going to change the color to something ridiculous again. This is not meant to look good. This is just to show you exactly what to do within Illustrator. Within this, I want to uh, create something in this layer so I'm gonna create maybe press M and I'm gonna create another square and then change the color again like so. And then we've got two of these things. Now these aren't actually in a proper layer, so I'm gonna call this uh, square and then change the color of it because you can't really see it very well if I can to gold. And then uh, I wanna create, I don't know, Maybe let's create another layer. Actually, yeah, let's create another layer. So I want this circle, this square here to be on a different layer. So the easiest way to do it is not to go into the layers and bring it all the way up. All you can do is you could press this square bit here and you'll see that there's a square highlighted on here. I'm gonna press Alt and then drag this up to the blue layer. What that's done is it's copied it over to the blue layer, but what if I wanted to just bring it up swap it i've just swapped it to the blue layer by just dragging it up and then basically that is how i've done it so these are on two separate layers like so we can also make clipping masks within this but this is going to be done on a new video i'm going to go back over here and make sure i haven't missed anything out 
Okay, so within these layers, you'll have loads of groups and stuff, especially groups are especially helpful, uh, not just for the layer stacking, but also so you can just um, click on them automatically. Let's try and find the group that we're trying to find. Okay, let's try and find another group. Okay, that's not really a group. Let's try and find a good group. That's not a group either. That's a bunch of paths. I've not done any. Ah, here we go. Okay, so group here. Okay. So you won't be able to see this very well. But within this, if I was to click off this, if I was to click a group, it would like group them all together in the selection, which is why it's helpful. So if you were to be on layers and stuff, then I would say the best thing to do is to play around with it yourself. There's only so much I can say about it. I know this is a strange video, and I know a load of people probably will say, I didn't understand a word you were saying there. But I hope some of you could understand the sort of basics of what I was doing there. But all you need to do is really have a practice with this and then see how you grow within the layers. So if you have any questions about this, leave a comment underneath and then I'll try and answer them. But if you think the question's already been answered, make sure you check uh, in the description or in another comment because I won't be answering the same question twice because I've done that for the past year and it's been a bit difficult to do. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Someone just uh, became a Patreon to me. Thank you so much. If you want to support what I do and so you can keep getting free content, then go check out my Patreon page at the end of this video because that's where you can tip me uh, a few dollars or a dollar per video that I do of a tutorial and then that'll help me keep things absolutely free. But don't feel pressured to do it. It just really helps me. And you'll also get prizes like t-shirts and Skype calls and one-to-one -one lessons and stuff. So make sure that you uh, do that. If anyone wants any one-to-one -one lessons as well, by the way, email me because I'm going to be going over a few things. Um, and one-to-one -one lessons are going to be done for Patreons. So if you want to become a Patreon, you'll get a free one-to-one -one lesson if you spend five dollars or more per video so thank you so much everyone and i'll see you in my next video goodbye